Hey everyone, my name is Aryan Yaki and today I'm going to be presenting our work Triplet Sensors, Demystifying Great Firewall's DNS Censorship Behavior. This is a joint work with Anonymous and researchers at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and Stony Brook University. We know that the Great Firewall of China is one of the more advanced internet censorship mechanisms. So we had the following questions about how it leverages DNS to do internet censorship. Specifically, what domains are blocked? What are the IPs used in the forced DNS responses? How are the domains being blocked? And finally, is a blocking consistent within China? To answer these questions, we designed the following methodology. To find the domains that are censored or poisoned by the Great Firewall, we send DNS queries from a machine in the US to a Chinese VPS under our control, which doesn't have any DNS resolving or forwarding functionality. So any replies we receive are going to be from the Great Firewall itself. This way, we can infer which websites are on the blacklist of the Great Firewall. We use this method to test the websites on the Alexa top million list every two hours across nine months. And in total, we sent 2.8 billion DNS queries and observed around 120 million forged responses. Our first question is about what domains are blocked by the Great Firewall. In the beginning of our measurement, we observed that around 24,000 websites from the Alexa list are censored by the Great Firewall using DNS injection. As shown in the figure, this number increases to 24,600 at the end of our measurement. When analyzing the number of censored websites added and dropped on a daily basis, we found one major drop on November 18th. And after further investigating this, we found that this drop is partly due to a keyword rule change from youtube.com to .youtube.com. The last thing we wanna cover on characterizing the domains is which categories of websites are mostly censored. The top 10 categories with the highest percentage of domain censored are shown in this table. We see that 46% of the domains in the proxy avoidance category are censored by the Great Firewall. And the next top category is personal websites. The reason behind this is that there are a lot of block spot domains and the Alexa top million list in the personal websites category. And apparently the Great Firewall has a keyword rule for .blogspot.com. We next discuss what IPs are used in these forged DNS responses. We know that the Great Firewall injects DNS packets in response to sensitive queries. We analyzed these injected IP addresses and specifically wanted to answer the following two questions. How do these IPs change and where do these IPs belong to? This figure shows the top five, top five ASs that have the most number of injected IPs belonging to them. In the first two months, we observed around 1,500 IPs belonging to 41 ASs being used by the Great Firewall. But interestingly, we saw a decrease in the number of distinct IPs injected by the Great Firewall on November 23rd. After this day, the Great Firewall only uses 216 IPs belonging to 21 ASs. Since the Great Firewall is using publicly routable IP addresses, we set up an experiment to test the reachability of these IP addresses over a week. It's important whether these IPs are reachable from China because the clients will try to establish connections to these IP addresses after they receive the DNS response. So for each IP address, we try to establish TCP handshakes on ports 80 and 443 from both the US and China. As specified in the figure, there are around 20% of the IP port pairs that receive a response to our packets when tested from the US, but not when tested from China. This confirms that the Great Firewall also performs some degree of IP blockings. Finally, we observed an interesting finding about the relation between the censored domains and the injected IPs they receive. We noticed that when aggregating our data on a daily or weekly basis, there were some domains that always received the same set of IP addresses. For example, when sending queries for hideip.co, we observed that the injected IPs it receives over time were only three unique IPs. So with our data set, we were able to observe five distinct IP and domain groups. And it's important to note that the domains in each group always receive the same IPs when aggregated. These groups were consistent across our measurement. For example, we found that the Great Firewall uses only three IP addresses to censor a set of eight domains and which mostly belong to the proxy avoidance category. Since this is an overview table, Group six actually contains the remaining domains that received from a set of 197 IPs. 
We now focus on how these domains are being blocked by the Great Firewall. As shown in the figure, we observe an interesting phenomenon. That is, when sending one sensitive query, we sometimes get up to three forged responses from the Great Firewall. But why are we getting multiple responses? It turns out that there are multiple injectors of the Great Firewall on the same path. And we found that each injector maintains a different block list. So queries for different domains can trigger different number of responses. For example, as shown in the figure, only queries for 55 domains can trigger all three injectors. We then tried to fingerprint the injectors by using all fields in the IP, UDP, and DNS headers. And as summarized in the table, we were able to find three fingerprints for the injectors. Injector one always sets its DNS TTL to 60 and turns on the DNS authoritative answers flag, while the other two injectors don't set that flag. You can find more details about these fingerprints in our paper. We also noticed the relation between the domain IP groups and the injectors. For example, group four, which consists of 33 domains in the search engines category only gets censored by injector one. You can also find more detail on this in our paper. When sending queries rapidly towards our host in China, we see that interestingly, the three injectors also behave slightly differently in how they format their DNS responses. For example, similar to what has been reported in previous work, we find that the IP ID and IP TTL of injector one are associated with its injection sequences. However, those fields seem to be completely random for injector two. While it appears here that injector three has a fixed TTL value, we actually find that it mirrors the TTL value of the pro packet. We'll talk more about this in the next slide. Next, we try to locate the injection points of the Great Firewall. Using TraceRoute, we found that our machine in China is located 25 hops away from our machine in the US. We tried to send DNS packets with incremented IP TTL values to our control machine in China to see at which IP TTL we actually receive a response from the Great Firewall. We observed that when setting the IP TTL from 1 to 15, we received no responses. But when setting the IP TTL from 16 to 24, meaning that we don't even reach our machine in China, we observed two responses from injector 1 and injector 2 from the Great Firewall. We continue to increase the IP TTL, and when the IP TTL value is between 25 and 28, we still receive two responses from injector 1 and 2. And strangely, when setting the IP TTL larger than 29, we get three responses back from the three injectors we identified. This is actually weird since the number of hops between our machine and the US, uh, in the US and China is 25 hops. But when setting the IP TTL to 29, which is larger than the num number of hops between um, our machine in the US and China, we get an extra response. We tested this using seven different locations outside of China and saw the same behavior. I'll explain the reason behind this in the next slide. After closely analyzing the results of the IP incremented IP TTL experiment and our fingerprints, we observed that injector three has this behavior of mirroring the IP TTL of the packet it observes. So the reason why we didn't observe three responses when the TTL was between 16 and 29 is this behavior. Let's go through an example. When we add the sender, set the IP TTL value to 29 and send it towards our host in China. When the packet reaches the great firewall who is sitting 15 hops away from us, the IP TTL value will be 14. What the great firewall injector does is that it creates a DNS forge response with IP TTL value equal to 14 plus two and send this back to us. And we received the response. However, if we initially set the IP TTL value to 16, when the packet reaches the great firewall, the IP TTL value will be one. And in result, the DNS forged packet it will create will have IP TTL three. Now this response will never reach us. It's important to note that this analysis is based on the assumption that the routing path is symmetric. So finally, when sending DNS queries to the IP of the router that appears to have the great firewall injectors, we found that there is no difference in the arrival time of the three forged responses. Uh, this indicates that these injectors are indeed sitting in the same location. Finally, 
we investigate whether our observation was limited to our control machine in China or consistent within all China. For this purpose, we select 36,000 IP prefixes belonging to China from CADA, and we select a non-responding IP for each prefix. Then we issue sensitive queries for a single domain to all IPs from a single point outside of China. The results are that we see the three injectors in most uh, IP prefixes, but there are only 8% of the prefixes registered to 114 ASS where no DNS injector is triggered. Furthermore, we see that the three fingerprints cover most of the IP prefixes, and there are only 4% of the prefixes that have an injector whose fingerprint is different from the three we identified. You can find more details about this in our paper. In summary, in this work, we found that the Great Firewall injects different set of IPs to censor different groups of domains. We then fingerprinted the three injectors of the Great Firewall and found that uh, they all appear to share the same injection point. More specifically, injectors one, injector one's IP ID and IP TTL are associated with its injection sequence. However, injector three's IP TTL echoing behavior has some implications on using the TTL limited probe packets to localize injectors. We also observed that the DNS injections can be seen in 91% of the IP prefixes in China. We have released all our code and data set on the following website, and thank you for listening to our talk.